Uh, okie doke. Um, before I begin, I'd like to echo, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the thank yous said earlier, but for the sake of time, I'll, you know, not repeat what Markov said so eloquently. Uh, so, here we go. I'll, uh, I'll start by addressing the non-proliferation argument that was in our first speech, since the negative seems to misunderstand the argument. SMRs might not stop states that have already made the decision to nuclearize. That, that's not our point. SMRs accomplish two ancillary goals that contribute to reducing the risk of breakout capabilities before they ever arise. First, a strong domestic nuclear industrial base allows the U.S. to offer states seeking civilian nuclear power a viable alternative to domestic enrichment and reprocessing capabilities, what Dr. Hamry referenced in his introduction. An SMR falls within almost every government's economic capabilities and is uniquely suited to older, smaller power grids. If a country decided to pursue domestic enrichment and reprocessing, in spite of the offer of an SMR, the international community could flag such an incident and take subsequent precautionary action. Right now, there is no way to accomplish this objective because the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty specifically protects states' rights to enrichment and reprocessing for peaceful purposes. We think SMRs are unique because they largely bypass this concern because they're a self-contained unit. Specifically, U.S. commercial leadership furthers our ability to influence the norms that pervade the international discussion that occurs over nuclear weapons. The pretension that Russia, India, and China will just fill in and pursue the same norms as the U.S. is an exercise, we think, in historical ignorance. Now for grid vulnerability. Microgrids are a good start, but they're not being implemented as widely as the Defense Department has advertised. Daniel Sater, a research fellow at Global Green USA, writes in 2011, in the first six months of 2011, the grid suffered 155 blackouts. Bases rely solely on the grid to power 99% of warfighting capabilities. DOD rarely invests in microgrids. DOD's net zero initiative does little to increase energy assurance at military installations. Additionally, as established by my partner in cross-examination, microgrids rely on inputs that are themselves subject to intermittency and entirely unproven. If the choice is between a whole new grid and SMRs, it seems like their arguments about escalating operation and maintenance costs are largely irrelevant. Now for Northwestern's core concerns. It's true that SMRs are expensive, but the military purchases its electricity from the civilian market now, which puts tremendous pressure on budgets. This is especially true overseas, where oil is often the only available fuel. Their Cochrane evidence relies on a slate of hand that equates square footage of concrete with total costs. The massive expense involved in constructing a new containment facility for each large reactor is resolved, as explained, via fab factory fabrication. Since there's only one self-contained standard model, even safety overhead should be subject to those same diminishing returns of scale. The waste concern is frankly old news and applies to all nuclear power, not just SMRs. Perhaps a new SMR industry would lift the political sclerosis that surrounds the waste issue now. Perhaps eventually SMRs will use generation four designs that consume old waste to produce power. Regardless, there's a ton of it sitting in dry casks at every nuclear facility in the country, and they have not presented why a permanent geological storage facility is preferable, necessary, or even in the offing. This isn't our problem, it's theirs, because we move in the right direction. DOD knows the risks of putting SMRs in a combat theater and would not do so for the very reasons listed in their Nexon evidence. Like many of the negatives concerns, we think it's a problem that resolves itself via simple precautions on the part of agency officials. As far as an attack on a domestic base is concerned, I'd say there are easier ways for interested parties to acquire nuclear material, and there's never been a successful attack on a domestic conventional reactor which have less security than a military base. What about accidents? The argument that the military lacks experience operating and handling nuclear reactors is patently false. The Navy has accrued thousands of reactor years of operating life without a single accident. But the Army has also successfully operated an SMR-style reactor in the 1970s. Brigadier General, uh, retired, Jerry Galloway, a professor of engineering and public policy at the University of Maryland remarks, 
Small nuclear reactors aboard the Sturgis provided power to the Panama Canal for nearly 10 years. We can't be entirely sure how the licensing process will eventually play out because no one has submitted an application for a design yet, but there are no substantive differences between the current process for approval and one that would be acceptable for an SMR. William Media, who was the laboratory director at Oak Ridge National Laboratory writes, since SMRs are based on proven and licensed components and are passively safe, we should not expect licensing issues. Finally, the status quo provides a simple test case for whether the 2010 Memorandum of Understanding that they're referencing was a success. Has there been a single SMR built since then? No. Look, we all seem to agree that DOD possesses a unique ability to commercialize nascent technologies via its testbed programs and its distribution channels that are already in place. The only remaining question is whether they should lead or follow. We say lead. Thank you. So you say the test of a memorandum of understanding from three years ago is whether we've built an SMR now. Your claim is that the licensing process takes four to six years, that the process of constructing a domestic SMR base takes around 10 to 20. Why is that our test for whether or not the DOE's efforts are effective? I'm merely making the simple observation that a memorandum of understanding nuclear reactors does not build. And I think but that's the, congruent but the with every. Funding might? Sorry? I said, but the funding might? Well, the funding for these DOE loans wasn't allocated by Congress until much later, and it was announced by the administration, but not distributed until only a couple months ago. Right, so they haven't yet built one. I guess my next question is, you say that the enrichment and reprocessing components of SMRs are the reason why it's more proliferation safe, right? Does that mean the United States would enrich and reprocess for every country that it ships an SMR to? Uh, I don't think that that's a determination that we have to defend as a component of our advantage. That's so not a that's not a reason SMRs are bad. That's a. Well, I'm that's not. I'm not trying to say it's a reason they're bad. I was just curious about that process, right? You've said that countries like China, Russia, et cetera, should not be the ones to lead this element. You've isolated that ENR is an important component of why it's safe. I'm just curious if those countries are not enriching and reprocessing, who is? Our argument is about motivation and economic incentives as well as available opportunities. All of these things contribute to norms. Where those ENR capabilities end up residing, we agree is largely not going to be changed by one reactor being in one geographic location rather than another. But we also think that the international non-proliferation sta standards and whether they're effective are dependent on more than just counting up the kilograms of uranium in any given spot at any given time. Okay, I wanna talk about your response to the microgrids component of our grid response. The, you would agree that the Seder evidence makes a claim both that microgrids are effective for deploying in war zones, are cost effective, have an impact on energy assurance. You would agree that they would be sufficient to resolve that concern if the DOD was investing more? If they worked exactly like Seder thinks they would, then probably. Okay, but they haven't been deployed, so we can't really know. Well, that evidence says they haven't been funded fully. The, you then assert that those are intermittent and that they wouldn't be able to back that up. Do you, I guess I'm just curious, is that just like diesel isn't proven as a fuel type? I was curious what that argument was. No, my argument's not that diesel's intermittent. It's that a backup generator on a base is limited by the gallons of diesel present. In cross-examination, Markov clarified that you also would like the department to install renewable facilities for bases. Well, All of this, I think, sure. means that a lot of the cost problems that the military is going to run into would not be the result of SMRs. They would be the result of flawed grid policies in the past. <laughs>